Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and welcome to the Game Exposed podcast. If you guys have a brief question on a narcissist and you want to submit it and have your question answered on the podcast, submit a brief question, you guys, no more than a paragraph because it won't be read. Um, text your questions to 917 636 1109 and text me your questions, and I'll try to get to as many questions as I can and answer them on the podcast, but please make it brief, no more than a paragraph, okay? 917-636-1109. Hi, you guys. It's Yaz, and today I want to talk about how to starve the narcissist. And people are like, what does that mean? Well, basically, narcissists, you have to understand a narcissist in order to know how to deal with a narcissist. So narcissists thrive on attention. They thrive on validation. They thrive in upsetting you or triggering you. So the best way to deal with a narcissist, number one, is to not deal with them. So the best thing to do is to starve the narcissist. Now, what does that mean? That means that you don't show them any attention whatsoever. When they hoover you, when they try to come back, if they call you up, you don't go on, get on the phone. You go completely, completely no contact with the narcissist, unless, of course, you have to deal with them. Maybe you're co-parenting, in which case you basically gray rock the narcissist. You follow what's in the stipulation, you know, as far as co-parenting the children. But if you want to starve a narcissist, you know, the best revenge, you guys, is best served cold. So that means that basically you're showing that narcissist that they are nothing. And this is what kills the narcissist, all right? Kills their their mental state is feeling like they're nothing. So when they reach out to you, like when I had somebody with a listener call say, well, what do you do about holidays? You know, do you, you know, even though they discarded me after 25 years of marriage. Like I said before, you you do nothing. Okay. You do nothing because this person is no longer a part of your life. And you know, the way, the whole goal, you guys, after dealing with a narcissist is to try to regain your peace. It's time for you to heal after all that you've been through. After all, you know, the mind fucking that they've done to you and making you feel like you're the problem, it takes people a long time sometimes to get back to be their normal self after dealing with a narcissist because the narcissist conditioned them to think that they were the problem. This is that cognitive dissonance where they confuse you as to what what truth is and what what's truth and, you know... And what's reality? Because a narcissist is going to twist the truth and they're going to blame shift and make you feel like you're the problem. So in order to heal, you have to have no contact with the narcissist. And if you do have to be in touch with them for whatever reasons, it very small, gray rock, yes, no, okay. You don't get into a lot with the narcissist. So you want to starve the narcissist. That means, and narcissists also try to trigger you. In other words, they will jump into another relationship. They may post all over social media, their new um, partner. And a lot of this is to like, they know you're watching. So they want to trigger you. They want to upset you. So in, in order to starve the narcissist, you have to make them what they are. Nothing, nothing. You also have to block them across the board. And people say, well, the narcissist just won't leave me alone. Well, yeah, they will leave you alone, but you have to keep blocking them. You know, if they call you from unknown numbers, you don't pick up the number unless you know who it is or you change your number. Some people have had to change their number and you let the your people know that, you know, not to have any contact with the narcissist. Because what narcissists will do is they'll try to contact your people to see what's going on with you. They could reach out to your family. They could reach out to your friends. And, you know, that's their way of trying to get through to you. But this is why you have to tell your people that, listen, do not talk to the narcissist. You know, you know, hang up on them. Don't talk to them. 
Don't pick up the phone and, and don't get in the middle of things because they're going to try to pump your friends and family as to what's going on with you, or they're going to try to smear you to your friends and family. So you starve the narcissist by having nothing to do with them and by your people having nothing to do with them and by you have nothing to do with the narcissist people, which is their flying monkeys, okay? And why is starving the narcissist so powerful? Because the greatest fear of a narcissist is being abandoned, okay? They, they hate being exposed, but even more so, they hate being abandoned. They hate to feel like they're nothing, okay? That's why a lot of them, too, they stalk you after you break up with them. People say, well, why, why are they stalking me? They're with somebody new. Why are they watching me? Because they want to see that you're not doing good. They don't want to feel like they lost anything. They also want to feel like they've had an effect on you. So that's why I tell you, never when you break up with a narcissist, never put up any of those you know, sentimental posts or something. Never let the narcissist know what you're thinking, what you're feeling, or what you're doing. Number one, it's none of their business. And number two, you don't want to give them satisfaction as to what's going on in your life. The other reason you do... You you don't let them know what's going on is because if you start a new relationship with somebody else, that narcissist may try to come back into your life and screw things up. And how do they do that? They come back into your life and all of a sudden they're love bombing and they're playing upon your emotions. And if you're a very emotional person, you're going to start to think like, oh, maybe this person, maybe the narcissist really cares about me. No, the narcissist doesn't care about you. What they're trying to do is destroy you and ruin whatever relationship you just started. This is why you have to starve the narcissist. You don't get on the phone with them. You don't entertain them. You don't respond to them at all, at all. You don't respond to them. If they try to text you or something from another number, you block, just keep blocking, blocking, blocking. And when people say, well, they won't leave me alone, they won't leave. If if they're not leaving you alone, it's because you must be having some kind of contact with them. You must be responding to them. Do not respond whatsoever, okay? Whatsoever, because any, even for you to respond and say, hey, leave me alone, you know, I, I, I can't stand you or whatever, that's still feeding the narcissist. The narcissist is still going to think they could still come back into your life. So you've got to be like stone cold, stone cold, so that they get so bored, they don't want to be bothered with you. You want to get them to a point where they realize that, hey, you know, you're a dead end street. They're not going to get anything off of you as far as trying to trigger your emotions. So you guys, it's like this, all right? The whole idea is to keep your peace by doing this. And I had somebody, she asked me, she says, well, what do you do again? You know, if the narcissist tries to come back and hoover you, should you play mind game back? Should you mirror them and kind of like try to mind fuck them back and play the game? Well, when you play the game, everybody loses, okay? The way you win the game is by not playing the game, is by showing them that you're not going to lower yourself. You're going to take the high road. You're not going to lower yourself down to their level. So even if you play the game, you know, you try to love bomb them back, you're trying to mind fuck them back. Number one, you still, you show the narcissist you care by even giving them attention. You've got to show them that they are nothing, nothing. You give them zero attention whatsoever. And, you know, when you even if you play mind games back with them and you mirror them that's still showing the narcissist that you care because you're making them important and how are you showing a narcissist that they're important because you're giving them your time all right this is what a lot of people don't realize just by you getting on the phone with a narcissist you're feeding them you're feeding the narcissist you're making them important just by getting on the phone with them this is why zero, zero contact. And when you gray rock, you know, one word answers to, you know, minimize, you're showing them that they're, they're unimportant, they are nothing to you, and that they, they don't phase you, okay? Because narcissists love to cause upset. They love to, you know, they're disturbed people. Internally, a narcissist is a disturbed person. They're a fractured soul. 
There's somebody who doesn't feel whole. That's why they always have to, you know, nothing is enough for the narcissist. They're constantly trying to fill the emptiness that they feel subconsciously within themselves. So, you know, by you starving them, that is going to make the narcissist, that the narcissist is going to feel that. And they're really going to feel it if they have nothing else going on in their lives. If they have nothing else going on in their lives and you starve that narcissist, which means, you know, no contact, you know, no response or anything like that, that there is no greater revenge than silence. Okay. Silence is thunderous. I remember this years ago, when I had a good friend of mine who, you know, I was, he was, you know, advising me when I was having problems with somebody, I'm like, you know, what should I do? Should I sit there? Should I have it out? And he, I, re- I remember him telling me, you say nothing. Silence is your message. Silence is one of the most powerful messages you could give to somebody. You're basically showing them that they are not worth your time, okay? It's the ultimate, ultimate revenge in showing somebody they're not worth your time. And people come back at me and they say, well, isn't that kind of like you're being like the narcissist? You're giving them silent treatment? No, you're not being like the narcissist because you don't want anything to do with them. You're done with them. See, when a narcissist is in a relationship with you and they give you the silent treatment, they're trying to punish you, but they're still in the relationship with you. But when you give the narcissist silence, it's because you want your peace. There's a difference. You want your peace and you don't see every time you get on the phone with that narcissist, it's going to upset you because narcissists are upsetting. And what's that going to do after you get off the phone with them? Because, you know, they'll never agree with you. They'll never own they'll never own their shit or anything like that. That's going to upset you. That's going to frustrate you. And they may call you names or criticize you. So why are you going to set yourself up for that? Why are you going to set yourself up or allow somebody that you know already is toxic an opportunity to shoot you down? You don't. You don't. At that point, when you're starving, the narcissist is a point where you feel you already know what they are. You know that they're toxic. You know that they don't take accountability. You know that they blame shift on you. So now you starve them from any more contact with you, okay? Any more contact with you. And, you know, this, again, you, the, way to, the way to regain your peace is to stay away from the narcissist. Trust me when I tell you, because I've dealt with narcissists and just one phone call, one phone call could could destroy your whole day with a narcissist. Just one little snide remark out of their mouth or one of their dismissive comments or, you know, their sarcastic remarks and it could set you off and, and, and just ruin your day, you know, from having a nice day with your friends, your children or anybody. This is why you distance yourself from the narcissist. The way you handle, and especially the way you handle a covert narcissist is by ignoring them and distance, ignoring them and distance because they, what they want to do is they want to send, you know, a subliminal message to make you feel that you are less than. They love dismissing you. That's why they'll make little comments like, "Uh uh-huh, Mm-hmm. Or they'll give you a smirky smile or something. They're sarcastic. They're wise asses, and don't give them an opportunity to do it. All right. And if you're a, if you're a truth teller and you're a straight arrow and you're somebody who walks and and talks with the truth, this is going to get under your skin. This is going to get under your skin. This is what causes reactive abuse, where people pop off, go crazy. Sometimes cops are called. So don't give them an opportunity to put you in a position like that. This is why you distance yourself. You starve the narcissist. No matter what they say, understand this. No matter what a narcissist, I can't talk this morning, you guys. No matter what a narcissist says, it doesn't mean shit. Because anything out of a liar's mouth doesn't mean shit. Once you've, once, once you've come to the conclusion that you're dealing with a liar, then you don't owe them anything. You don't owe them a response. You don't owe them an explanation. You don't have to defend yourself. Once you know that somebody played mind games on you or lied to you, you don't owe them jack shit. 
You don't owe them jack shit. This is what people don't understand. They sit there and they feel like, well, maybe I should just say something to them. No, you don't need to say anything to them. They are nothing. By saying something to them is not going to make a difference because they will never, ever validate you. They will never, ever see it from your point of view. And what you're doing is you're giving that narcissist power by making them important, by even speaking to them, okay? So you want to starve the narcissist and let them know that, you know what? You played mind games with me. You lied to me. Now I have nothing to do with you. I have nothing to do with you. I will never, ever, ever entertain a conversation with you ever again in my life. I will never give you a minute of time. I will never give you a minute of space in my brain because you are nothing. So when that narcissist tries to reach out, block, don't say anything. And it'll also, you know, you won't get triggered too, because the narcissist is going to run their mouth and say something that's going to piss you off. So that's why you're protecting yourself. You need to protect yourself. So you need to starve the narcissist and let them know that by you starving that narcissist, you are respecting yourself. You're not allowing yourself to put yourself in a position of disrespect, okay? It's like I said, you guys, once you see what they are, you no longer owe them anything, okay? You no longer owe them anything because they played you for a fool, So anybody who plays you for a fool does not deserve a minute of your time, period, dot, end of story. So you distance yourself, you ignore the narcissist, and this is what destroys the narcissist, okay? This is why this kills them because they like to know that they still have contact, even with their exes. They want to know they could still reach out or that somebody still cares. They hate to see an ex just like dump them and walk away because then they may have to sit there and face shame and feel like, oh, did they do something wrong for them to just, you know, turn their back on them and not ever say a word to them? You know, but again, they'll try to, you know, suppress those feelings and just say, oh, their exes were crazy or they had mental issues or something like that. They twist it around so that they don't have to face shame that they did anything wrong in their relationships with their ex. All right. But I'm telling you, the greatest power, listen to me when I tell you, the greatest power is your silence. All right. I've learned this for many, 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 many years of dealing with toxic people. I I have been a fighter my whole life, you guys. I've been the kind of person that if you, you know, if you did something to me or you, you tried to play games with me, I'd be somebody who would sit there and I would destroy you verbally, you know, in the corner for you know, if, if somebody attacked me, I would do, I would destroy you verbally. But guess what? When you're dealing with a narcissist, it's not going to get you anywhere. And I've been there because I've gone back and forth battling with narcissists, trying to explain to them, you know, my point of view, my point of view. And this is one of the keys to, to recognizing a narcissist. This is one way you could test the narcissist is to say to them, well, can't you just see it from my point of view? A narcissist is going to pop off if you ever say that and they're going to say, I don't want to see it from your point of view or I don't care about your fucking point of view or something like that. Whoa, now you know you're dealing with a narcissist because a narcissist will never, ever want to see it from your point of view. So that's how you could test somebody to see if they're narcissistic because they'll get so angry to ever have to think that they would have to look at it from your point of view or have to sympathize with you because they don't want to look at it from your point of view. Narcissists have tunnel vision. They only want to see what they want to see. So the bottom line, the lesson to be learned here, you guys, is when you're dealing with toxic, the best thing to do is minimal contact, gray rock, stay away, do not go back and forth with them. It's like I did a reel on gaslighting and I, I, I said in the reel, what do you do when somebody gaslights you and you say something to them like, you know, um, 
you know, where you've been and they, they deny it or they pull the amnesia card and they say, I really don't know what you're talking about. I, I re- they play the dumb routine. This is your covert narcissist, right? They love to play the dumb routine. They love the amnesia card. I, I can't recall. Uh, I don't even know what I did yesterday. Okay. They're just such big bullshitters. So the bottom line is when somebody's gaslighting you or, 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 you know, you know, they know what the truth is, but they're playing stupid. Like they don't remember. You don't go back and forth and say, oh yes, you do. No. When you do that, you lose your power. What you do is do, what you do say is, okay, we're done here. And you walk away. That's your way of letting them know that you know what they are and that you are not going to engage in that nonsense. You're not going to play their game. You're going to disengage from lowering yourself and, and play their game. It's like you're, you're letting them know, I see you for what you are. And guess what? Now your games don't work on me. Now I don't deal with you because you're not a truthful person. You're a liar. And you know, you like to gaslight and basically gaslighting is basically just twisting the truth to confuse you. And that's somebody playing mind games on you. And anybody trying to gaslight or play mind games on you is somebody that you starve. Okay. You starve attention from them. You don't honor conversation with them because they're playing you for a fool. Okay. So you step back from that. You step back from that. And if they come to you and they say, wait, I want to say until you're ready to speak truth, then we'll talk. Until then, I have nothing to say. And you walk away. All right. You you don't have to go back and forth and say you did this. You already know what they are. You already know what they are. You don't need it spelled out for you. Okay. So that's what it is, you guys. Starve the narcissist. Have your respect. And don't ever let anybody play you for a jerk, okay? Minute you see mind games, you disengage and you walk away from toxic. And you don't owe an explanation to toxic. You starve the narcissist by not giving them one ounce of attention, validation, or a minute of your time, okay? So I hope that helps you guys. I got to run before I get interrupted again over here. (laughs) I was, I got a podcast early because uh, at a certain time, it's like chaotic in my house. It's a high traffic house. So you guys, I hope that helps you. If it does, hit the subscribe button, share the podcast, um, subscribe to my YouTube, the Game Exposed podcast on YouTube, where I have over 4,000 videos talking about covert nars, a lot of covert narcissistic stuff, you know, a lot about the discard and all of that you could check out. And if you want, follow me on Instagram at the game exp123 and have a great, ge- have a great day, you guys. Okay. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question and you want to get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that the Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. 
So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp 123 and also on Instagram, the game exp 123. Okay, and have a great day. Thank you.